Hello friends, welcome to my NXSS video. You are with me, Professor Raju Shekharan. How to decide the sample size for the research study is the topic of topic today. This is very important. Most of you are not aware whether you have selected a right sample or sufficient sample or insufficient sample. So you may have a lot of doubt on those things. So today video will clearly guide you step by step to decide your sample size. First thing. Uh, you need to know uh, there are two types of sample, probability sampling, non-probability sampling. Those details I will tell you in the next video about the sampling technique. First, I will tell you that how to decide the sample size, then you can use the sampling method later. So, these are the factors you need to keep it in your mind when you decide the sample. Population size, margin of errors, confidence level standard deviation, z-score, sample size formula. All these things are the main, uh, main, main factors you need to keep it in your mind while deciding the sample size. Let's see one by one. First, population. What is mean by population? See, the population, if you look at this thing, yeah, if you look at this particular uh, chart, look at this is the entire, the whole lot is called population. Within this entire lot, you will not be able to study. That is why you select one chunk of the population that is called sample. Why do we, why are we not studying the entire thing? Why do we select only very few? Because based on the difficulty level, because feasibility of studying the entire uh, population is not, not possible by uh, any researcher. That is why we select a appropriate sample. But here, have you selected the required sample size? That is what the main important discussion. So, we will see how to select the appropriate sample size for your research study. So, the population, you know very well, it is a whole uh, uh, lot of people. There is a two way, one is known population and another one is unknown population. Known population size is in case you know the total number of employees in a company you are going to study. That is a known population. But unknown population means such as the number of pet keepers in a country. You want to study the, the emotional level of pet keepers in India. But the numbers definitely will be infinite. You will not be able to know that. This is called unknown popula population. Uh, sorry, popula population. From this unknown population, you need to decide the sample. That is the real challenging part but I will guide you how to do this, those also. So, next one you need to know is margin of errors. Otherwise, the same thing is called as confidence interval. Margin of errors and confidence interval are the same and uh, you need to know what is the interval of uh, uh, based on the margin of errors you have given. See, uh, errors without error, 100 percent pool through research nobody can do. So, obviously, any research there will be certain errors, but what is the accepted level of errors? Errors are inevitable, but you cannot have too much of error, then your research will become invalid. So, in general, if you look at here, the accepted level of error is plus or minus 5 percent. Plus or minus 5 percent error you can take. So, when someone says that uh, for instance, this example, look at this example in the election poll campaign prediction, they say that 68 percentage of voters said yes to proposition Z. That means somebody, they voted to a particular party or something else, but we are not sure. And uh, certain time, the uh, poll prediction becomes wrong as well as becomes correct also. When it becomes wrong, you may wonder why it becomes wrong, because always there will be a plus 5 percent and minus 5 percent. Plus or minus uh, 5 percent, it means that either it can be positive 5 percent, negative 5 percent. That is why, you know, you cannot relay those results 100 percent, but majority it will be correct if they use to the proper sampling method and technique and definitely it will be right, uh, uh, right, uh, what you call uh, finding. Next one is confidence level. See, previous one is confidence interval. Kindly make a note. This is confidence interval. It is plus or minus 5 percent. But next is confidence level. 
see here it you say the larger your sample size the more confident you can be uh, about your results because if you have a less sample size obviously the result may not be correct so you have to have a large sample but again that large sample how do you decide for that you need to check the confidence level so here confidence interval checked with the plus or minus 5 percent but confidence level that how much percentage you are confident about your result that is 90 percent confident 95 percent confident 99 percent confident these are the three common confidence intervals uh, which are used in the research uh, most of the cases people say within these three only they'll select and uh, uh, 99 is again less and 90 is uh, also less one 95 will be a widely used level of confidence for research so this is this uh, third one what is the fourth one you need to identify the standard deviation what is the standard deviation standard deviation means after calculating the mean value mean means average from the average there are assumed that 400 samples you have collected each sample they have given certain responses how much they, their response is deviating from the other response? What is the level? Again, in the normally accepted, the standard deviation is 0.5. Statistically, you have to say that 0.5 is the accepted standard deviation. If it is more, more this, if the standard deviation is more 0.5, if it goes more than that, the result will be uh, uh, will not be good. It will it may not give the statistically significant result. So the Standard deviation should not be more than 0.5. That is the accepted level. And low standard deviation means actually it is good. High standard deviation means it's not good. See, what is a standard deviation? It is deviating from a standard. If it is highly deviating means it's not good. If it is deviating less, it's always fine. And Another one is, uh, find, next one you have to find your Z score. Why do, we, why do you need this G score? When you are unknown about the population size, that's what already we seen, the pet keepers of India, you may not know the population size, that time you need to use this Z score and uh, uh, what do you call sample size formulae to decide your sample size. So what is this Z score? Generally, Z score is a fixed, uh, what you call mathematical value based on the confidence level it is given. And uh, these are the nine, uh, three widely used to uh, confidence level. 90% that Z score, fixed Z score is 1.645, 95 means 1.96, 99 means 2.56. In case if it is less, you can select the Z score which is fixed, you can simply Google it, you will be able to get the complete Z score detail. But you, most of the time, the Z score is very less means it's not good. That is confidence level of it. If it is less, obviously the result will be negative. And because you need to know this Z score to calculate when you are test, what you call deciding the unknown sample size. So now we'll we the next is the this is the formula. This is the sample size formula, mathematical formula, statistical formula you need to use to calculate the sample size, especially when you are not aware about the total population. So this is the formula that score into two and standard deviation into one minus standard deviation uh, by confidence interval into two. And uh, you may not understand this. Let me give you with uh, explain with example. Here we have taken example assuming that you we choose a 95 percent confidence level in the taken sample, five percent point five standard deviation, and margin of confidence interval is plus or minus five percent. So the uh, formula is you know that sample size Z score into standard deviation into 1 by the standard deviation margin of error. So for the first thing Z score, we need to know the Z score. We have selected the Z score as a 95% confidence level. So the score is 1.96. So we have given 1.96 into 2 into standard deviation is 0.5. So we have given 0.5 in 5 divided by 0.5 into 2. That's what the, the rule of formula is, you know, into 2. And if you calculate this, you will get uh, these numbers. Uh, that's a normal mathematical calculation. No, you, you, you do this. Finally, you will get this 384.16. So you actually, you have to round off the number. So the actual, uh, what you call required sample size is 385 for this unknown population. 
this is the uh, final sample you needed for this unknown population now let's see uh, in case you know the sample size exactly know the sample size what to do that's very simple i'll i'll tell you the uh, this formula it is available i'll give this link to you in the uh, description box you can check it up you can use this online sample calculator so there are confidence level population size margin of error is given it will automatically calculate your sample size so confidence level already we selected 95 here population size is known see whenever you are you, you do not know the population size you will use the what do you call sub, uh, population size formula if you know it you will use this online calculator so i he give let me give us maybe 500 see margin of error is 5 percent so the ideal sample size is 218 but when you reduce your confidence level look at the 90 percent your sample size it will become less and if it if you increase your uh, confidence level your sample size will become higher but see look at there in the 95 it is 218 only but if your confidence level increases 99 percent sample also increases so let us go ahead with the 95 okay now margin of error again if it is increases sample size will reduce margin of error uh, red, what you call reduces sample size will increase look at there i give margin of error two percent you require 414 sample out of 500 if it is one person you require 476 that means without any error only one person error means you have to study the entire population so we cannot study the entire population so that it is always people used in the research five percentage as the margin of error now it is possible 218 is the normal size so accordingly you can fix anything in case even if you put 5000 also the change will be very less 357 it is changed let me make it as 50,000, it is only 382, make it 5 lakh, 384 only, make it 50 lakh, 385 only, because the sample size increases, but this confidence level, margin of error is same, when the number goes beyond certain limit, the, the what you call required sample will be only less only, look at the next one, I am adding 5 crore also, the same number, 385, it is not more than 385, that is what already we have de uh, decided, when we know when we do not know the population size obviously the 385 will be the optimum number to go ahead with this or to, to study but if you know the number you calculate exactly if it is 50 means look at there you, you require 45 if it is 10 you know the only 10 population you are going to study you have to take the entire 10 not uh, it is not only 8 or 7 if it is 25 look at there you need to select 24 but only when number increases the sample size decreases when i give 50 it is 45 but when i give it is 100 it is 80 but when i give us 500 it becomes 218 so the number uh, let me tell you 200 it is 132 300 it is 169 400 it is 196 500 it is 218 if it is 600 means it is 235 in that way it increases you can check your original uh, feed your original population size but confidence level you have to be very clear see whatever you give that should be followed in the statistical analysis also otherwise you will not get a proper result i guess this video definitely would guide you would have guided you to select your sample size and use it wisely and go, go with the proper sample size i'll catch you in the next video till then bye from rashikar if you find this video useful please share to the other people and let them get benefited. Till then, bye.